Well, good morning. Welcome once again to Word for the Week, our online book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. My name is Pastor Jeremy Heikum, and I'm very glad to be with you as we look at the 10th chapter of Max Licato's book, um, Traveling Light. This chapter is um, entitled, I Will Lead You Home, uh, The Burden of the Grave. And uh, honestly, this is... um, This is probably one of the easier chapters for me uh, to sort of walk you through. Um, I don't think, however, that this is one of the easier chapters for us to read. Um, I'm going to start today with this idea. As Christians, uh, everyone in the world knows that Christians believe that um, Jesus died to forgive us from our sins and so that by having been forgiven, we might be able to live forever with him in heaven. And so the, the sort of the crux of our faith is bound up in the time after we die. So there have been a myriad of folks, uh, skeptics, critics, otherwise um, unbelievers, who have criticized Christians, who have criticized the church, for its irrational fear of death, given the fact that the, 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 the whole of what we believe really has less to do with walking this earth and more to do with after we die. And so, in some sense, as Christians, why wouldn't we be eager to die so that we can experience the joy that we say we're going to have when we are living forever with Christ? That argument on the part of the skeptics and the unbelievers really truly is one that we have to come to terms with as believers in Christ. I once heard um, a, a skeptic, uh, an atheist, say uh, of Christians, uh, you know, for people who are so sure that, um, that Jesus died for their sins and that they're going to live forever, this church this, these Christians really are afraid to die. And I wondered about that after I heard it. Are Christians, are we the church afraid to die? Do we carry a fear of the grave? I think Max Licato suggests that we really do. Um, on page 83, sort of the middle of the page it says this we all have to face it in light in a life marked by doctor appointments dentist appointments school appointments there is one appointment that none of us will miss the appointment with death everyone must die once and after that be judged by god hebrews 9:27 Oh, how we'd like to change that verse. Just a word or two would suffice. Nearly everyone must die, or everyone but me must die, or everyone who forgets to eat right and take vitamins must die. But those are not God's words. In his plan, everyone must die, even those who eat right and take their vitamins. I, I think that's hard for us to hear, even as Christians. The reality is... We're not eager to die. But (laughs) scripture calls us to a faith, to an attitude, to a belief, to an understanding, to a perspective that says it is not death to die. In fact, when we die, we just begin the process of living. (sighs) Honestly, uh, I'm I'm, I'm uploading this video a day late because I... I was really thinking about how I wanted to handle talking you through the fear of the grave. And I had a lot of ideas come to my mind yesterday, none of them that I was super excited about, um, because I frankly just wasn't really communicating what I wanted to communicate to you about the, I'm going to call it, irrational fear of death that we have as Christians. Um, And so I want to just spend the rest of my time with you telling you a little bit about what I've experienced, what I've learned, what I've seen um, from folks, from believers, from the church um, in terms of death. 
And as I do that, I want to offer you the opportunity to just kind of think about your perspective of death, your understanding of death, and your perhaps fear or um, acceptance of death. And so I'm going to start here. Um, Scripture tells us that it is not death to die. In fact, when we die, we begin to live. Um, Just in that moment, we have new life. We are um, granted an opportunity to now live forever with Christ Jesus. Of course, we have to confess our sin. We have to uh, believe and trust. Romans 10, 6 says, what does it take for us to be saved? That we would um, believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Um, and, And so for those people who have made a decision to trust Jesus with their whole lives, with their whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love the Lord their God above all other things. Uh, serve God's people. For, for folks who have made that decision, who have decided to follow and trust Jesus and, and live the life of a Christian, there ought not be a fear of the grave. But I want to tell you that there is. There very much is. Um, there have been several instances in my life, both as a pastor, um, as a student in seminary, Um, as a chaplain in residency at the Cancer Treatment Center of America, um, where uh, lots of instances where I was um, placed in positions where I was literally watching death, watching it happen. I have been in situations where I've watched death unfold over maybe even a full year, uh, an agonizing, terrible, terrible year. I have watched death unfold in a matter of minutes, in a matter of hours. Um, I, I, I had an experience once where a, a gentleman came into a um, facility that I was, I was working at and um, was diagnosed uh, that day with stage four cancer. Um, by the end of the week, he had passed away. Now. I went to the doctor and I said to him, okay, I must be missing something here. How in the world did this, I don't know exactly how old he was, 60, 70 year old man, go 60 or 70 years of his life having really no symptoms. He he came to the facility after having had a follow-up, a a standard follow-up with his doctor. And and he he had no real symptoms, but he's diagnosed with stage four cancer. And within a week, his life is taken from him. How does this happen? How is there a switch that's flipped? And I didn't ask the doctor this, but in my head, I'm thinking, how does one deal with such a speedy coming of the end of their life? But then the question becomes, how does one deal with a lengthy coming of the end of their life? For example, if you or I were were, um, um, bedridden, unable to care for ourselves, maybe unable to speak, and we sort of had to linger in that way and wait for death to come. How do we reconcile that? And so I think there is this fear. I know there is this fear of death. I have been in situations where um, some of the strongest uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, men and women of faith, um, have have said to me in their, their final days or their final moments, um, Pastor, I, you know, I, I know that I've, I've, I believe Jesus. I trust him. I know he's my savior. I love him. I know he, he is caring for me. I know I'm going to go home to be with him, but I'm scared. And on one hand, I call that an irrational fear of death from a scriptural perspective. It's an irrational fear of death. On the other hand, it is an entirely appropriate acceptable, normal, human response to death. I think you could go out and find me the strongest believer in Christ Jesus you could ever find. And when it comes to the final moments, hours, days of their life, they would probably confess to you that even still they are afraid. Why? Why are we afraid? Because we don't know in our minds, as well as we know in our hearts, and we believe in our hearts what is yet to come. Death is unknown. I don't care how many books you say there have been written. I don't care how many books you say you have read. Uh, you know, some of you may have read um, 
uh, the name of the book escapes me, but about the young uh, boy who um, had sort of this like um, near life or, or near death uh, experience or death back to life experience. Um, you know, great book. Um, I'm not saying he didn't have that experience. But we still don't, it still doesn't really share with us much about death. What does that experience feel like? How does it unfold? Uh, what, it, what is that time like? And so death continues to be this thing that we have lots and lots of questions about. And as a pastor, I'd love to be able to say to you, well, turn open your Bibles. You will find out everything you need to know about death. Well, if you turn open your Bibles, you're going to find out a lot of things about death, a lot of great things, a lot of comforting things, a lot of true, absolutely true things about death and what God promises. But what you're not going to find is what it feels like. What you're not going to find is what your mind is going to think in that moment. What you're not going to find is what kind of pain there is. You won't find anything about what it feels like to take your last breath. And that's a scary thought for all of us. And so the fear of the grave is from an earthly standpoint, from a human mind. Remember, I've said this before, I call our human minds feeble. Uh, and, and, and they're just too, um, they're too feeble to understand the things of God. From a human standpoint, faith, God, Christ, salvation, redemption aside, from a human standpoint, fear of death is entirely rational, entirely normal. But from a scriptural standpoint, it is completely irrational. God has promised us so much in his word. It is not death to die. When you die, you shall be home with me. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I, if I wasn't going to prepare that place for you, why would I tell you that I am? And so you can trust that I'm going to prepare a place for you. And where I am, there you will be with me. To the one who knocks, the door is open. Uh, I, I will come in and eat with him, and he with me. Um, and, and the whole book of Revelation about about the throne and the and and the and the the the, the creatures falling down before the throne, and the elders and the and the angels singing, "Holy, holy, holy." And we're told so much about what those those moments after our death will be like. And so, in that sense, we have so much to be holding on to, trusting, knowing, believing, and, and waiting for and being eager for, that it's almost would be more rational for us to wake up every day and instead of saying, God, thank you so much for waking me up and giving me another day here on earth with my family, it would almost seem rational for us to wake up and say, God, is today the day? Is today the day that my life here will end and I will come home to be with you? But when we look at that from a human standpoint, of course, that sounds like you want to kill yourself. That sounds suicidal. So you see how the two things sort of don't work out. There is this human earthly understanding about death that is fearful. Why would you want to die? Why wouldn't you want to live? And then there's the scriptural, uh, spiritual, God-blessed, God-given um, privilege to have no fear when it comes to death. So kind of going back to what Max Licato talks about in the book, um, he gets to this idea um, at uh, page 84. Um, middle of the page, it talks about how David speaks to God um, and we listen. In the, in the middle of Psalm 23, David sort of shifts from saying um, uh, things about us to God to to being God to us. So instead of our conversation towards God or his conversation towards God, the conversation turns now to God towards us, right? It's as if David's face, which was on us, now lifts towards God. His poem becomes prayer. Rather than speak to us, he speaks to the good shepherd. You are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. David, David's implied message is subtle but crucial. Don't face death without facing God. Don't even speak of death without speaking to God. He and he alone can guide you through the valley. Others may speculate or aspire, but only God knows the way to get you home. And only God is committed to getting you there safely. 
um, as I read that, I thought about uh, a time when um, uh, Sarah and I were, uh, we were in New Orleans, um, actually for our honeymoon, which was, was, um, was still a great memory, but a really terrible uh, vacation for us. Sarah got very, very sick, and we had lots of travel issues and so forth. But we were in New Orleans for our honeymoon, and um, uh, for a part of our honeymoon. And uh, we had gone out for dinner and um, done some walking around uh, the, the, the French Quarter, um, and we were trying to make our way back to our uh, bed and breakfast hotel. Um, and it was, you know, it was late. It was maybe like eight, nine o'clock, dark. And, and uh, I had been to New Orleans before, but I certainly don't know the town super well. And so I said to Sarah, well, why don't we just walk back to our hotel, you know, and, and experience a little bit more of the city. And, uh, and she said, well, uh, here's the problem with that. Do you really know where you're going? I said, no, not really, but I have a basic idea of where the hotel is. And she said, uh-uh. I, I want to I wanna go back to the hotel with someone who actually knows how to get us there. Now, she had every right to say that because moments when, prior, pre, uh, times previous to this, when we've been maybe downtown in the city here in Chicago or other places, I've suggested, oh yeah, I know how to get there. And, and, and basically, I had the basic idea about where that thing was located or how to get there. I certainly didn't know the fastest or, or, or most direct route to get there. And uh, did we eventually make it? Yes, but by a very long convoluted convoluted route and so um she had every right to say nah i want to find somebody who can get us to our hotel and, and actually knows where it is and can get us there and so you know we took a taxi instead i think that idea is what's being presented here the thing about fear that scares us is we don't know we just don't know we want to find ourselves with god forever after we die and scripture gives us everything we need to know about how to get there but when that moment of death comes we go do i really know how to get do i really know where i'm going you know we can almost understand why thomas said to jesus lord we don't know where you're going how could we know the way and jesus has to come back to him and say listen i told you i am the way the truth the life no one comes to the father except through me so let me bring you there and i think that's what helps us to rat, uh to sort of um wash away the fear of the grave from an earthly standpoint and take on this trust eager excitement for the grave for for the the future we have with christ from a spiritual standpoint jesus is there guiding us home he knows the way he is the way and so so often when we're sitting at the bedside of someone who's life is coming to an end, we'll say, just reach out your hand. Take the hand of the Savior and, and go. Trust and know he is leading you home. I don't know that what I've said today will change your mind about having a fear of the grave. I think our human minds, again, are still always going to have a bit of fear when it comes to that moment of our lives. But what I, ha I do hope you've seen this morning is that um, there is this spiritual concept there is this faith reality trust of god reality that renders death something that we need not fear and it takes our human fear of the grave and makes it seem completely silly useless why are we so afraid jesus is ready to meet us he is there waiting for us and so as we read in the 23rd psalm as, uh, as David says, you lead me in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Why are the rod and the staff a comfort? Well, for the same reason that a taxi was a comfort to Sarah. Because the rod and the staff means that that's the shepherd. And the shepherd surely knows the way through the valley to the pasture. So trust the rod, trust the, the, the staff, trust the shepherd to lead you home. One of my favorite hymns of all times 
is, um, says in the chorus this, Ye who are weary, come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Jesus is standing at the end of your life, whenever that may be. And brothers and sisters, you know, I love you. I want to do life together with you forever. I don't want to speed up that moment. But at the end of your life, Jesus is already standing, hand outstretched, saying, weary one, come home. I know the way. I am the way. Let me lead you. Death need not be the valley of the shadow, but rather the highway into the light. I hope that you all have a great week this week. I'm so glad to be back with you after our uh, Christmas break. Um, Next week, we will take a look at chapter 11. Until then, have no fear. It is not death to die. We die that we might live with Christ forever. Have a great week. We'll see you very soon.